welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking on this video and if you're a subscriber thank you so much for subscribing but i know some appreciate and i'm gonna say it every video but i appreciate you in the event that you're a new subscriber and you don't know how i roll over here now today i have some things to do today's a palop holiday if you haven't figured it out yet i have different days for different businesses i assign different days to different businesses i have maybe four or five businesses i'd have to sit down and check but i have about four to five businesses and so i have to i have to have to have to allocate different days to different businesses in order to remain sane and profitable today's palop holiday i have quite a few things to do for palop holiday because palop holiday is only once a week listen i've been doing this for two and a half years so it's not hard for me i can do this in my sleep which is why Palapoli is not a very demanding business. So today is Palapoli day. Now here's why Palapoli gets a whole day today. I had an 8.30 meeting this morning and I say had because I forgot to start vlogging this morning. On my way to my 8.30 meeting and look up on book up. And it's now 8.24, but if you know me, you know I'm never late and I know I'm not gonna be late because I'm gonna do some piece of driving and no. I'm sorry but I had an 8 30 it's now 9 10 10 past 9 I had an 8 30 meeting this morning with a Palo Poly client we found uh, an apartment for her based on her standards you know her taste and her budget and the purpose for acquisition we found an apartment for her the offer was accepted our attorneys got the agreement for sale recently so I had a meeting with her today at 8 30 to have the agreement for sale signed now here's the thing i actually went to the meeting place ac marriott starbucks and i was calling her to ask her you know where are you but she said that she was in portland so i was like huh apparently our calendars never had the dates correct so my calendar had it for today at at 8 30 which is what we agreed on but her calendar had monday at 8 30. So we never got to have the meeting today, but I'm not upset or anything. Things happen and this particular client is not a slacker client. She's usually on time. She's very assertive. She knows what she wants. So I'm not upset. We're just going to have a Skype meeting, a Zoom meeting tomorrow and then she can send the documents thereafter. Just for me to explain to her the entire agreement and to make sure she understands the, to the fullest extent, um, of what, as to what she's signing so that's what that meeting was for but i'm back home now the reason i'm back home is because i bolted out of my house and i never did wash the coffee cup on me use and the sandwich plate and listen i don't like things in my sink so i'm home i'm gonna wash these dishes I never sent out my books this morning, so I have to send out my books. I asked the bearer to come 11 this morning because I anticipated the meeting. Between the meeting and getting back home, I wouldn't be able to, to dispatch until 11. So I have the books to dispatch, the, the kitchen to clean. I feel like every time I vlog, when I was at my clean kitchen. <laughs> but I don't like a messy apartment, guys. Worse, I have OCD. I don't like messy apartment. Worse, if the kitchen has smell like bleach, it means that it's not clean and so it may not can't focus. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And then I wanna talk to you guys about real estate. That's what this video is gonna be about today. Um, I wanna talk to you about real estate. But I'm not go too deep into it, you know. If you want to know what the process is, you can book a consultation with me at Palo Poly Consulting. I'll tell you the entire process based on your situation. I'll tell you what you need to do. I'll tell you what your position is. I'll do your financial assessment for you and we'll work from there. If you decide to proceed with us, the consultation fee is, is deducted from the total fee at the end. So you don't have to pay that. If, if you decide to go with us, the consultation works out to be free. Right, so I'm gonna talk to you about real estate today, but first I'm gonna, I'm gonna just straighten up the kitchen and then I'll come right back to you guys. Okay fam, so I just did the dishes every day, straighten up the house. Um, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna assemble my order sheet for today and then I'm gonna book it out of here. I'm gonna go to Mandeville to look for land for a Palo Poly client. That's what I meant by Palo Poly is 
I'm going to take up my entire day because between the 8.30 meeting and um, going to Mandible to find land, that's for whole dating. And today's Friday. I try not to make my Fridays too bogged down because I need a mental break. I go hard Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, I go halfway hard. Saturday, I usually go hard again because I'm on my coaching calls. And then Sunday, I don't do anything at all because... You have to make sure you're okay mentally you know you have to take some time out to take care of your brain this is a whole other video but i'm big i'm big 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 in the psychology i love learning about the brain um so because i know so much about the brain i don't know enough but because i know so much about it i know that it's important to take breaks occasionally so that's why today I could pack some other things in my day today, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to take a mental break. Now, I changed my website, right? I edited my website. You guys, I learned how to edit my website. I'm so proud of myself. Now I need to learn how to make a whole website, a functional website. Not one of them look of it pretty, but it's not functional. I need to learn how to make a pretty and functional website. Uh, but I edited my website to put, give you the option of the delivery day. So that way... You don't get too many back and forth emails, you know, like, hey, thanks for your order. This is the total. Da, 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 da. When do you want it delivered? And you tell me Tuesday and me say, okay, uh, remember to make payment. Da, da, da. It's too much back and forth thing. So when you put on the wet, when you're ordering, it asks you when you want it delivered. And whatever date you put there is that date that, do, 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 is that date delivery is going to be made. So, and it's working out quite fine. I'm quite proud of myself. Today's the 27th. I'm going to look for all the 27 orders. Um, and then I'm gonna dispatch this. Guys, you know what I have to do? I have to talk, uh, um, I have to call my surveyor, my surveyor for a report. I need a report for one of my projects. So I'm gonna call him. I'm gonna have a meeting with him. I probably have to see him today too. And then I'm gonna go to Mandeville. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm gonna do instead. So I just finished doing the books or I've just finished assembling the order sheet. So now I'm just going to take up some books and um, send them out. So here's the thing. So I usually, my system tells me how many orders I have going out each day. But I like to make it easier for my bearer. So what I do is instead of me saying, um, here are some books, figure out the order sheet. I redo the order sheet in a way where it's arranged in a certain manner. So I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about real estate because I don't know why um young people think that they have to purchase their home to live in now if you've read my book you know that i have a whole other view my view on real estate is not a normal view let me tell you from now i don't believe in buying real estate to live in for you to live in i believe in you buying it um for somebody else to pay your mortgage i don't believe you should pay your own mortgage right so if you're gonna buy somewhere and you're gonna live in there if you could rent one of the bedrooms or rent the other side of the house or whatever it is to be able to pay the mortgage, that's a different story. And I quite encourage that. Um, but for you to say, for example, you're gonna buy an apartment, your mortgage is $150,000 and you are gonna pay the $150,000 out of your salary. To me, that does not make any sense at all. If you are a young person, young adult trying to build your portfolio, if you earn $300,000 or you earn $400,000 and you live in a place that the mortgage is one fifty, dollars I think you can do a little bit better than that. You could find somewhere to rent that's a lot cheaper. You could find somewhere to rent that's between $50,000 and $70,000. And I'm telling you this as something that is possible. Find somewhere to rent between $50,000, $70,000, even $80,000. But the idea is that you must can find somewhere cheaper than your mortgage on your place. So just to reiterate, let me tidy it up a little bit. You can find somewhere to live in, somewhere to rent, that is a lot cheaper than the mortgage on your own place. Then in turn, what you do is find somebody to pay your mortgage on your place. You see how human nature is and how society is, how economics work? You will find somebody to pay the $150,000 rent or whatever it may be. People are out there doing that. It depends on their financial standing. You have people who earn a lot, they earn a killing, but they probably believe in the same thing that I believe in. You know, they probably own 
uh, a house that the mortgage is half a million dollars so they plan to rent that out and live in your apartment which is much cheaper the $150,000 but the idea is that if you do your acquisition properly if you do your research properly you will be able to make it work you'll be able to make the maths work the numbers don't work if you live in the apartment or the house that you own it's a different situation if you find somewhere to buy and the mortgage is less than the rent that you would pay on the market as it is that's a different situation so let's say for example you find somewhere to buy let's say the mortgage is fifty thousand dollars per month in kingston it's a one a nice one bedroom and nice bathroom and thing the equivalent on to the current market the the, the rent would be eighty thousand dollars then that's a situation where you could live in where you own that's a different situation but number one, make nobody feel like you have to go knock up yourself or go buy property for sale. Just to say you own where you live. That don't make any sense if you're trying to build your portfolio, right? That's my point of view on it. If you have my book, you can go to the real estate chapter. I break down the numbers to show you why I say it doesn't make any sense um, generally. I've explained in this video instances where it may make sense because it's not a case where it never makes sense it can make sense if let me just reiterate if you would find somewhere to buy where the mortgage works out to be cheaper than the rent on today's market on the market today or you find somewhere to buy that you can rent a portion of it and you live in a, in the other portion in that case the tenant would be paying the mortgage that's a different situation but if you are in a situation where you live in where you own and the rent the mortgage is more than the rent on the market then that's where i think your portfolio would be stuck that's where i think you could you're not manipulating your income properly that's where i think you have um you have space for improvement or room for improvement so that's just my view on it a lot of people uh, will not agree with me because it's not what we're taught growing up traditionally we're taught you know, go to school, get a good degree, get a job, get a good job, you rent and you, you, you rent for a couple of years and then the ultimate goal is for you to buy somewhere for you to live in. But I mean, in 2020, with inflation and the, the current real estate market and um, the salaries that are out there, the tradition will just not hold up. If you follow the tradition as a young adult, you will not be in a situation where you're gonna retire when you're 30 or 40, you know? You're gonna be in a traditional situation where you're working till you're 65, even a bigger employer to keep you on beyond 65 because, you know, you're still living hand to mouth, you're living paycheck to paycheck. That's what will happen. That's what will happen. If a lot of us just get over the keeping up with the Joneses syndrome and just humble yourself, living somewhere that is cheaper than you can afford your portfolio will be so much better for it you can make so many more decisions your income will be so versatile if you just don't care what others say live somewhere where yes you probably could afford somewhere better but you know that you have sacrifices you, you're trying to make in order to be ahead in life stop trying to keep up with the joneses we don't care if at 25 you bought a five million a five bedroom mansion we don't care you're focusing on your own portfolio if you can afford a a five bedroom mansion settle for a two bedroom mansion for now and then we work our way up manipulate the income that you have for now i see numbers where somebody would earn two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and they live in where they own so the mortgage that they pay is a hundred thousand dollars Plus, they have to pay maintenance of. I'm gonna give you even best case situation, best case scenario of ten thousand dollars per month. So in total, they're paying one hundred and ten thousand dollars per month, just basic property tax and everything. I calculate in there yet, one hundred and ten thousand dollars out of their two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Which, if you do the math, you realize that you are all the way accomplishing this life is this place that you're living. That's it. Because after you don't pay your mortgage and the maintenance, you pay oh. I should explain guys for maintenance if you live on a, if you live in an apartment complex you as the owner of the apartment you have to pay something known as maintenance to the strata so you know in an apartment right so i just went to close the windows so that you know um the traffic 
you don't hear the traffic as much. But as explaining, if you live in an apartment complex, if you own an apartment unit, you don't have your own lawn and your own security guard and you don't um, have your own sewage system, you know, obviously overall. But these things have to be in place for the entire complex. So what happens is that one company takes care of all of these, but obviously this company has to be paid. Each apartment owner has to pay a certain amount every month to their strata to take care of these things and this 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 expense is known as maintenance now maintenance can range uh, in kingston your maintenance going to be between five thousand best 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 case meaning you don't have no pool you don't have no gym you don't have much land space you don't have much nothing it's a small complex five thousand dollars is best best case best case in fact for Portmore, Phoenix Park Village, the maintenance there is 2,500. Um, just to give you an idea of based on different locations. But in Kingston, 5,000 is best best case. Maintenance guys can go all the way up to 100,000. Even exceed 100,000, it depends on where you live. I'll give you an example, I did an acquisition for a place in Cherry Gardens, no, Jacks Hill. The maintenance there is $120,000 per month. So can you imagine now, as a young person, let's say you land a really good job and you earn really well, you earn the one million, you earn a million dollars per month. You would qualify for, let's say for argument's sake, your mortgage comes up to $400,000 per month. You could qualify for that and you could buy one of them hosting a jack sale. But what you're not remembering when you enter into this arrangement is that you're gonna have to pay maintenance. Maintenance for places like in Jacks Hill, you're looking at, as I said, about 120,000. So even though your mortgage that you pay to the bank every month is 400,000, you have to pay an extra 120. So you to pay a total of $520,000 per month um, just to um, have the the apartment that you have. And guys, yes, I know what I'm gonna say in the comment section, blows and scary mortgage for $400,000 a month, maintenance for 120, yes guys, it exists, it exists. Believe me when I tell you, it exists. May I tell you no. But if you want to look at a more average situation, let's say an apartment of around, cost around $25 million in maybe Kingston 8, Kingston 6, Kingston 10, your maintenance is going to be around twenty dollars to $25,000. So now back to the numbers as discussing. When you, when you um, calculate all these different things, you will realize that it may make better sense for you to remove yourself from the situation and have somebody else pay it because as i said there's always somebody willing to pay that if you talk to a realtor you will they will tell you that somebody's always willing to direct your unit it's just a, a question of how long it's going to take you to find a tenant but listen to me it only works if the acquisition is sensible no but i got to take up no 40 million dollar one bedroom because anna said it half a it half a rent it half a rent you take up a 40 million dollar one bedroom and you don't even have a marketing plan you don't know who you're gonna market this to you're just hoping magically a realtor will find somebody to rent it for from you for I don't know for three hundred thousand dollars a month like you have to be practical and you have to be sensible but if you're gonna buy a one bedroom for example for 25 million dollars it may work if you remove yourself from the situation and you go and live your humble life you find one little fifty thousand dollar place seventy thousand dollar place heck even eighty thousand dollar place eighty five thousand dollar place to live in per month but you still have your acquisition over here and somebody else is paying that wouldn't that put you in a better situation financially I mean, I advise my clients that whenever you're doing an acquisition for investment purposes, don't just say, I'm gonna rent it out, period, and you don't have any other plans. I always recommend that you have three to six months worth of mortgage put down in an account because your tenant, you cannot rely on your tenant 100%. Your tenant will not pay the rent at some point or they will pay the rent late. It always happens, it always happens. So you cannot, um, be in a situation where you are not prepared the bank will not accept an excuse of oh my tenant is late is you and the bank enter an arrangement so you can be late on your obligations so i always tell my clients even though you're buying it for investment purposes have three to six months worth of rent put on in an account so if this if your tenant is late you're able to pay it and then when the tenant pays you just put it back um and then so so yeah so wouldn't you be in a better situation where you live your humble life or pay your little rent and then 
your you still have acquisition over here for this 25 million dollar place but somebody else is paying the mortgage every month look at it this way whether you want to live in the place or not you're still going to have this acquisition that's not going to change you're still going to have this acquisition in your portfolio what would be different is that you're not the one paying it that's the only difference now to go even deeper into the reason why i think you know it will be better for you to rent where you own and rent you rent somebody else's place to live in is that let's imagine your mortgage is $125,000 per month and guys this probably sounds like some big numbers but it's what the market is right now the average mortgage is around $100,000 per month in Kingston so a hundred to 125,000 so let's assume your mortgage is even $100,000 per month if you if you rent out your unit that you own and you go and you find somewhere to rent to live in for fifty thousand dollars that's fifty thousand dollars that you would have saved right there that you can use to invest and do another acquisition in the future but if you had lived in this unit that you own the whole hundred thousand dollars would go directly to the bank that's coming out of your paycheck you understand i hope you see what i'm saying let me go back over it if your mortgage comes up to $100,000, if you lived in the apartment that you own, $100,000 will be coming out of your paycheck to go directly to the bank every single month. If you rent where you own and you rent where you live, what will happen is that the $100,000 will not come out of your paycheck. Just obviously it will because technicalities, but for practical purposes, you're not paying $100,000 out of your paycheck for living expenses. You're only paying $50,000 to pay the rent that you live for the place that you live in. Your tenant will be paying the $100,000 to the bank. You understand? So you will have a balance of $50,000. You would have saved $50,000 that you can invest, flip that, and do another acquisition in the future. Now, just sidebar, because I don't want anybody to get confused or anybody to come at me in the comment section. The tenant is not going to pay the 100000 directly to the bank. That's why I said for technical purposes, yes, the, the 100000 will come out of your paycheck. But for practical purposes, it won't. That's what I mean. The 100000 how it works is that the tenant pays you the 100000 The bank takes the 100000 from your salary, your paycheck. You understand so that's why i explained earlier that remember you are in a contractual uh a contractual situation with the bank not your tenant so that's my rant on real estate i'm talking to young adults now don't feel as if you need to run up in your own place because that's what society says in i just i the numbers don't support it back in the day when one house cost two hundred thousand dollars you know that did you know that my parents bought their house for $200,000 25 years ago? $200,000. So when you hear the traditions, you have to bear these things in mind. People back in the day were paying $200,000 for houses. You have to look at these things. Back in the day, you could have buy one party with with fifty dollars i obviously don't know but these are the things you have to remember you have to adjust you have to pivot based on the times you have to do your own independent analysis before you make financial decisions i have helped you with analysis because i've done it already but still look into it you know get in the habit of analyzing things on your own so guys that's my run for today in fact i think i'm gonna even close out the vlog today i'm just gonna jump in my van now go to me to to mandeville nothing special so you know all that work um I'm, no i'm gonna go to survey first and then i'm going to go to i'm gonna go to mandeville to find some land but that's all for me for today i really just wanted this is there's way more to this topic way way more i'm really passionate about real estate i'm really passionate about this topic in particular so i have no doubt we're gonna talk about this again but i'm gonna close out the vlog here guys <clears throat> don't forget to like subscribe comment share guys Thank you so much. We're 4,000 strong now, guys. The Ananovia family is 4,000 strong. I'm so grateful. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. I see the comments. I see the viewers. I see the share them. I like it. And I appreciate you guys. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share. Press the bell something. The notification bell something. So you know when I post a video. And I'll see you in my next vlog. Bye.